Hi, I'm Mike Elam, and this is Buford Pusser, The Other Story. Welcome back to Buford Pusser, the other story. Uh, with me here is Dennis Hathcock. Uh, you know, he's a returning guest. And tonight we're here to talk about uh, Buford and the robbery at the Plantation Club. Uh, as, as most of you know, Dennis's dad, W.O. Hathcock, uh, owned and operated the Plantation Club. And uh, so Dennis is going to share a little bit about what he uh knows about that uh incident or lack thereof uh, <laughs> dennis how are you i'm fine how are you mike i'm doing well let me let me get this thing started by asking you uh about wo you know uh and how old uh he was when he opened the plantation club well they opened it in a about 50, 1951, I don't know the exact date, 51 or two right in there. And uh, he would have been about 24 years old. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of people get the impression that from the movie, I, I imagine, that uh, all these folks were a lot older than they were, you know, because in uh, the movie they had Buell Jaggers that was supposed to be W.O. Hathcock and so on and so forth. And in the movie, Buell mm -hmm. Jaggers was an older gentleman where, you know, uh, W.O. was actually quite young at the time, as was uh, That's right. Smith and, and uh, uh, Toehead White was young. He was really young. Uh, right. You know, when you think about Jack and Louise across the uh, highway from the plantation at the uh, Shamrock, and you realize that they were the old timers in the group and they were in their... Uh, you know, at that time, we're in their late 30s and early 40s. Right. So it's kind of a deceiving thing. Yes, it is. Okay. A lot of deceiving things, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you about this, uh, about the Plantation Club itself. Uh, can you describe it and what it was like? Uh, you know, the entertainment they had, the... Uh, uh, the venue itself, the food, the drink, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. What do you recall about it? Well, uh, the people, you know, on weekends, you always had a band and a uh, house band. Sometimes, you know, we'd have, uh, my daddy'd have different big act, uh, big acts like uh, Charlie Rich, uh, Bill Black combo, uh, I, uh, Gene Simmons that had out haunted house back then. Uh, as, you as, know, and then he had a house band. Uh, the one I remember mostly was Jackie North because uh, Jackie North would pick at me, and and I can remember that pretty well. But. Uh, what about the, the food? Uh, you, the the food. The what? Uh, I was going to ask you about the food, for instance. Just what was the typical fare in that? In what the, the food was just like all other bars and stuff around there, and like practically today, I had pickled sausage, pickled eggs. We had Stuart sandwiches i don't know if anybody remembers them but they were good great sandwiches you heat them up and all that and they had assortments i remember a rack over there that had assortments of nuts and potato chips and all that kind of stuff you know and uh that's about it you know yeah. uh as far as the uh what was the typical uh beverages that were served do you recall those oh yeah well i mean of course most people drank beer and don't get me wrong they uh 
There was some whiskey sold there to bonded whiskey, not, not white whiskey as they would like for everybody to believe. But uh, uh, it was all bonded whiskey. And, you know, don't get me wrong. It, some of it may have at times come from Missouri or somewhere in the Tennessee tax wouldn't have been paid on it. But federal tax was always paid. And that's why it was nothing no more if you got caught with it than a $50 fine. Okay. Um, and like I said, beer, that's what my, they start, and, and I can tell you, the people didn't have but three kinds, Bud, Schlitz, and Miller. Okay. Now, moving on just a little bit, I know in 1954 was, was one of the dark days for the Plantation Club. Uh, when an individual named Warren Engel uh, was killed there. And uh, your dad was involved in that. Right. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Right. Well, of course, I wasn't there and I didn't, didn't see it. But R.C. Matlock, which you, he was a, a, a he, matter of fact, he was a deputy under Pusser. Uh, I knew R.C. fairly well. One time we were talking, and he knew Warren Engel real well, and uh, he he was telling me that he he was there, and he told me that uh, if your daddy hadn't killed him, I was going to, and uh, said he was trying to start a fight with everybody in the place that and uh, that daddy tried to put him out uh, two or three times. And that he'd come back and throw the door open. Of course, Daddy pushed him out the door again. And he said, I was standing right there when it happened and said he reached in his pocket and grabbed a knife and started up towards you, Daddy. And uh, W.O. shot him. And I've heard Daddy talk. I, I, I heard – only time I ever heard W.O. talk about it at all, he said, you know, I didn't mean to – I had no intentions of killing him. I just seen he was coming at me and he had reached in his pocket and pulled out a knife and I just pulled the trigger and it hit. I reckon it hit his hit and turned up and hit his heart. Uh he wow. didn't shoot at him to, to kill him, you know, but yeah. The uh, one of those things. the thing that I think everybody needs to know is that, uh, of course, uh, uh, a grand jury was impaneled to look in to uh, the shooting, uh, and they right. didn't find cause to uh, uh, bring any charges against W.O. Is that correct? No, that is correct. And I, you know, I think most people that knew Warren Engel, and I'm not knocking the guy because, like I said, I actually became good friends with his two sons and his daughter. And I, I never had them to ever say a word in any way. And as a matter of fact, his daughter was at my wedding and her and his wife. Uh, they never said a word and, you know, there wasn't anything like that, but he would go home and I think abuse their mother and, everything and uh when he'd get drunk and had a pretty bad temper and everything when he when he got to drinking like a lot of people and yeah well you know i uh tell a lot about that in my book and along with other things about the plantation club uh you know there's so much that uh we could talk about all night long uh, that I cover in my yeah. book, try to explain it, uh, as you've explained it to me in the past. Uh, one of those things that's in the book that I talk about is the alleged casino room at the Plantation Club. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it wasn't quite like they showed it in the movie. I, I, I can assure you. It was about I'm guessing 12 by 15, that room where the, the uh, tables and everything was at. And the uh, 
it was a stock room, basically. That's where we kept the cocoa. The cocoa guy would come in and deliver, and that's where they set the cokes and seven ups and uh, and orange crushes. And Coke seven up and orange crushes is what what we always had out there. And uh, Daddy and I helped him build it. I remember it had a little old. Dice, I mean, there was a dice table that looked like something a kid had built near. I mean, <laughs> and I helped him build it. It was a uh, made out of uh, some old plywood, and of course, he sawed it and made the sides up on it. And the legs on it was some used two by fours that came from out there <laughs> beside the building. And that was a, that was a, the, that dice table that was a, <laughs> in the casino, and as far as all them the card tables like you find in a casino, they weren't in that room. They were just sitting out front where most people sit and drink. But when they wanted to play a few games, a little bit of cards, you know, they'd go out there and sit and play. So, so that's so about what it. You're, what you're telling me is that. There were no roulette wheels back there in this little room. No, 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 I can assure you, no roulette wheels. No slot machines, anything like that. No saw. slot machines, and they weren't even no dancing girls or nothing. <laughs> also, uh, something a lot of people don't know is that uh, Howard Carroll uh, often kind of helped yeah. your dad out around the place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He'd spend part of his time over there at Daddy's. He'd spend part of it over across the street at Jack and Louise's. And he was, you know, he was an old guy. And I, you got some pictures of him. I, and and uh, he'd get drunk, but he just hung around out there. And everybody kind of gave him a little money and uh, to help him. And, of course, he'd... He what he actually did was he daddy let him have some half pints of whiskey and he'd when somebody came up he'd run and take it to him and I'd give him a tip and all that but daddy let him stay in that little room not he actually the bed part of it was uh, there was a door over there to the side that went to where you went upstairs in in the building and. His his little cot was in there, and then there was a right beside that big dice table was a sink that was just a sink attached to the wall, and that's where Howard shaved and took his showers, <laughs> took a bath. If one of them baths he took under a, in a sink, and made his hot hot coffee, instant coffee every morning. So from what that's I understand, about it. there was no vanity, no cabinetry or anything no. like that with that sink. It used to sink hanging there. But and I that, believe you told me at one time that that if they went fishing, that sink was where they'd clean the fish. That's where they'd clean the fish. They'd pull a table. I've seen them do it about pull a table from over there at the out of the front and pull it up there and put the fish out there and and, and dress them there and clean them under this water running out of the, uh, you know, it right, right there in the middle yeah. of the casino, they'd be clean. That's right. Right in the middle of the casino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, it, it is such a shame. I mean, such a, but anyway, I have such a misconception all because of uh, the way that walking tall made it look and it was nothing like that. I, th I think that we, uh, uh, and when I say we, uh, several of us have talked about the fact that uh, the gambling was nothing like we saw in the movies in any of these places, that uh, that was strictly a movie thing, that uh, the big stuff that took place was over at the Shamrock, and that involved the, the Razzle game, uh, played right there. In the yeah, but it, it, even there, it wasn't like they showed it. You know, right. I mean, over there, it wasn't anything like they showed, but but uh, at any rate, well, uh, uh, it's it's entirely different. Uh, you know, at one time, now just correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there was a bar area, there was a uh, dance floor that was separated by a little like a four foot pony wall, and uh, then in another right. building, 
is uh, where your mom and dad had uh, living quarters for when they stayed there at the uh, club. Well, the building was, it was just part of the same building. Right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. There in uh, a section of it, it was actually a living quarters. Uh, right. A small That's living right. room, their uh, bedroom, uh, such as that. And uh, a lot of people don't understand if uh, these people didn't stay at their club or have someone there, the chances are that they'd, they'd get burned down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I was raised. Till I, well, that's where I lived till I was about nine or 10 years old. And uh, then I would go stay with my grandmother some during the week. But on weekends, I stayed down there. So don't know. Uh, let's talk for a little bit about uh, Buford's story about being attacked, beaten, uh, cut up and robbed there at the plantation club. Uh, did your dad ever tell you about that instance? Or did he have anything to say about well, it? Well, yeah, I've heard him talk about it. I have, you know, I've heard uh, one of his best friends one time uh, was, uh, uh, I can't even think of his name. His last name was Barker. Some of Teresa's family. That was it. Bud Barker. He was a a uh, wildlife, what do you call him, game and fish commission guy. And he, that was dad. They they grew up together and was good friends. And uh, they were sitting talking and and he sincerely asked Daddy. He said, "Tell me something. Why did Buford Pusser hate you so much?" And I've heard him tell it a bunch of times. He said, I have no idea. I never seen the guy until the night they came and robbed me and left me for dead. And I have no idea what 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 that was all about other than robbing me. So other than uh, that, your dad had no recollection of this fight where Buford was beat up, cut up? That, that didn't ever happen. Uh, you know, I asked Dr. Bud about it. He claimed that's who sold him up. Dr. Bud is, was real good friends with my grandmother and granddaddy. And one time I asked Dr. Bud, he said, I've never even seen Buford Busser step foot in my clinic. I, you know, well, you know uh, it's, that's it's just a made up story. Another big made up story. It's interesting that you mentioned that because, uh, of course, you and I have talked about all this for quite some time now but you know in the process of looking into this story initially i couldn't find any uh police reports regarding the incident which was kind of amazing in the uh fact that his uh Buford's dad was chief of police in adamsville and you would think that if his son was beat up cut up and robbed that uh, a chief of police would have just raised holy hell about it, you know, and wanted to uh, get right. to the bottom of it, but apparently that didn't happen. Likewise, I don't know of, of anybody who's uh, ever found any medical records to uh, back up Buford's claim that he was uh, cut up as uh, he claimed to have been. Of course, uh, I do believe that most of the cuts that uh, he alleged that he had were supposed to have been to his head and face because in the movie they put it uh, all to his chest, but I think that was for cinematic purposes in that they just look so much more brutal. Yeah. And, you know, somebody getting their, their head kind of beat up, yes. but we can't even yes. find that. And you would think that uh, when something like that happened, that uh, somebody would remember seeing Buford all cut up and stitched up as he claims to have been, but even in a small town the size of Adamsville, you can't find anybody who remembers ever seeing Buford like that. Of course, on one of the fan pages, there is a, a guy on there that claims that he's got a photo of, of Buford and he's shown it on there where Buford has a patch over his uh, face and so on and so forth. But ironically, that same picture is in uh, photograph is in the uh, Buford Pusser Home and Museum where that uh, the caption there says that that was from the auto accident that he had back 
uh, just prior to when this alleged incident took place. Right. And uh, Dewana uh, Pusser even had in her book, Walking On, uh, the same photo with the same description that the injuries that are in that photograph were actually caused from an auto accident. So, you know, that kind of leaves you uh, wondering. And like I say, in, a, in an incident like that, you would think that somebody would have come forward to say that they witnessed the whole thing, but nothing. Uh, you know, in a, again, a town the size of Adamsville, you would think somebody would remember seeing Buford walking around with a face and head full of stitches. But well, if you look at that picture close, it's on his nose. Yeah. The bandage and everything's across his nose. There's nothing up in there and every, you know. Nothing at all. Uh, one last thing. Not for 192 stitches in his head. Uh, the, another thing I wanted to ask you about was Toehead White. You know, uh, different places you'll read that you know, uh, Buford, or pardon me, Toehead worked at uh, the Plantation Club a little bit, so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I've never heard anything about that. I know, know that he was there occasionally uh, as a patron, but do you have anything to tell us about that? You know, I, I saw, I'm like a lot of people, I mean, I thought Toehead is really something. Well, he had he had something kind of like Elvis Presley. He had that charisma about him. And when I was a kid, boy, and he'd pick at me and everything. So I never knew of him. I know he didn't work there or anything. He would come by there, him and Junior. A lot of times him and Junior Smith would come out there. And they'd sit and drink back there, like especially on a Friday or Saturday night. They'd be back there like everybody else, drinking. And uh, Now, I said they didn't work there. Toehead would voluntarily be a bouncer, if you want. <laughs> he would. He would volunteer to be a bouncer if something started. But uh, other than that, and like I said, I don't. I can tell you this. I've heard Daddy talk about it, and everybody knew he was a heck of a fighter. Yeah. I mean, he could fight. I mean, uh, well, I've, 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 I've said a lot of times, uh, you know, that uh, women would describe Toehead as a very handsome man, well dressed. Yeah. And most of them will tell you that he was well mannered toward them. Uh, very. Very, very. My mother will tell you, she never heard him say a curse word in his life, uh, you know, around him all the time. And so the same was true with Junior, Junior Smith. Very polite, very nice. Uh, not what they play him up to be. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he did some, they robbed some stuff, did this and that. And, I'm sure he probably killed some. I'm not well, saying that, but. You know, I, I guess the thing that has uh, got me is out of all the people uh, that we've talked about over the years uh, on these various Pusser pages and everything, I walk away with the impression that the only person who truly earned the reputation that they had uh, out of all this was Toehead, that he was he could be as polite and nice as he wanted to be and there was a flip side to him where he could be the most dangerous man you ever met uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you ask you about something did I ever tell you about running into the guard that was a guard at, at Atlanta when he was in Atlanta the Atlanta prison no we've never talked about that 
I run into a guy one time. He was an older guy, and he had been a guard in Atlanta. So he was there talking. I told where I was from. He said, did you ever hear of a, a toe-ed white? I said, oh, yeah, I knew toe-ed. And I told him who I was. He, he said, well, I'm going to tell you something. He's one of the worst ones that we ever had. I respected him. He respected me, but as far as all them other, they was all afraid of him. And that just like what we were talking about, about fighting, if they wanted to tackle him, he'd tackle any of them. Huh. So, well, at any rate, we're going to get in touch. Toehead in another uh, chapter about all this. But uh, again, uh, you say that W.O. had no idea why that uh, Buford seemed to hate him so much. No. Uh, I think I told you this. Mother said that she thought she had remembered seeing him in the place one time. And that's all she could remember. And probably daddy didn't see him because, you know, he would work behind the counter. Right. You know, one and, and I think she says that she thought she, but they always thought that there was a guy from Adamsville that was supposed to have been friends with Pusters, what some, whoever he was. And he did come down there and get in a big, a bad fight. And then nobody, at the, I mean, daddy or none of that bunch, of, but he got in a bad fight and somebody, I think, cut him outside. So, I mean, we all, I always thought, well, that, that's just, Pusser took that up and stretched it into that it was him that did, that, that it happened to and, you know, all that, so. Well, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of the episode we had last week where we talked about uh, Kenneth McCoy. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the claims there that uh, Buford had watched Louise Hathcock beat, he, uh, beat Kenneth McCoy to death with a uh, uh, ball peen hammer. And, right. uh, of course, Kenneth McCoy's son last week was my guest. And he told us how that uh, his dad didn't even remember Louise being around, that it was all about Toehead. And it didn't right. even happen inside the club. It happened out. Uh, down the uh, road a little ways where the thing right. went to fight. So it seems like Buford had a propensity to uh, well, kind of tell stories of his own and in yeah. his own way. So I don't Twist know. him the way he wanted him. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'd like everybody to know that I'm going to have you back on here when we uh, do get to uh, the plantation club robbery you know when okay. uh, jerry uh, wright and marvin king jr and buford came down and uh right. robbed the plantation club and uh like for you to share what you know about it i intend to do the same share what i know about it and try to clear up some of these myths that have uh, uh been out here ever since the uh, uh pusser era as sheriff well, I can own it. I, you know, uh, I remember going down there because their mother called and he is in the hospital and I was at my grandmother's and uh, we went down there and uh, I can tell you what the scene was. Okay. Well, we'll get great. into all that next time yeah. that uh, we have you on here, which won't be too long, actually, because we're trying to keep this in chronological right. order. And so we'll go through all that then. So right. uh, you have anything else you wanted to add? No, not really, but I appreciate, appreciate you letting me be on here and tell my side, of, our side of it. Okay. Well, again, I appreciate everybody that uh, watches this. I appreciate any of the comments that you send in, any questions that you have. Uh, you, you can contact me through uh, Buford Pesser, the other story on Facebook. Uh, ask them there. I'll try to uh, get answers uh, to your questions from Dennis. 
uh, about what we've discussed today. Uh, of course, what the whole aim here is, is to get out the uh, true story uh, of what happened during the Pusser era uh, prior to being sheriff, while sheriff, and uh, up until his death, uh, because the truth is important about all this. Uh, and just like ever for everybody to remember that, you know, uh, the truth has no agenda. So with that, I guess we're out of here. Dennis, all appreciate right. you being here. And I enjoyed being here. So thank all you right. very much, Mike. We'll talk to you next time. Okay.